Hello, and today I want to give something for your peace of mind. And this is the basics of writing a fiction. Now, while there's so much to go into, I mean, like, come on, marketing, writing styles, you know, things like that, source material. Let's not think about that, although it's most likely put into your head. No, 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 no. Let's not. Let's go with the basics. Because there are people out there, and this is more or less what this is catering to. You young-minded writers. Those that's got it there. You know you got an idea. You know it's great. You just don't know how to flesh it out. You don't know exactly how to really begin. And for those that do write, and you've got something, but you're missing something and don't know what it is. Hey. I want to help and that's what this is about this is about helping because we need more writers we need them now an extreme basic of writing before I get into my notes and things like that simplistically make sure you spell correctly that is of the utmost keep that in mind spell correctly and also before I get to my notes, make sure if you're going to write in the past or present tense. Me, I like to write in the present tense. You know, it's going, what's happening, not what has happened and has gone on. Things like that. Now, some people, they'll say, hey, I don't like one or the other, so I don't care to read. Don't mind them. They're just one, you know. There are millions of people. They're just one. There's going to be someone that likes what you do. That's very important. Know that. There's going to be someone that likes and there's going to be someone that loves what you do. All right? So, let's push onward. The basics of writing a fiction. What you need. This is all this is about. So, number one, you need a character or characters. Basically, your favorable, which equals the protagonist, or your unfavorable, which equals the antagonist. So a protagonist, good guy. Antagonist, bad guy. And just to help you, sometimes you don't know which is really which. Those are called plot twists and whatnot. Twists all throughout the story you could do this. But like I said, I'm just putting little seeds there, but we're gonna work on the basics only. So focus on the basics. So next, character development which is about this character or these characters. So tell us about this character. From where is this character? You know, how, you know where they grow up? City, state, province, prefecture, count, uh, county, country, town, something. Where? Or are they from parts unknown? Something like that. What is the importance of this character? Think of jobs, social support, learning, age, etc. What will and won't this character do to stay on the favorable path? That's what you think about. Things like that. Very subtle, but direly important. Because your character needs character. And character doesn't mean something good or bad when someone builds character. It just means the makeup of that person's mentality. So next. When it comes to antagonists, why are they like this? Why are they after the protagonist? Does the origin of the antagonist mindset make sense? That's something to think of. The antagonist and protagonist have roughly the same building blocks, although those blocks can be from vastly different areas. So wrong side of the tracks, and they grew up to be a really nice person. Good side of the tracks, they were privileged and grew up to be a complete wrong-minded being. These things happen. So, <clears throat> consider the interaction of the good one, protagonist, and maybe bad one, antagonist. How does it begin? That's a good question, right? How does it begin? When do they finally see each other, meet each other, lock up? Who knows of who first? So many things to think of. How does it escalate between the two or more? 
Meaning it could be a group. It could be one against many. It could be one against thousands. And truthfully, the antagonist and protagonist does not have to exactly be a person. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, creature or something. It could literally be one against the world. They just go into a different mindset against everything around them. There's much to play with. Now, next, setting a scenery. Where does this take place and what time? Picture it, Sicily, 1946. It was a bright and sunny day out atop a lush hill overlooking the small town that raised me and most every other kid at the time. That would be a way to start it. Something like that. Maybe a period piece is not right for your style. Maybe it's just not you. So maybe something like in the massive steel city of New York, New York, all are offered to take a bite. But what most don't understand is they are the meal. This city, the people, the business and politicians will eat you alive. They will devour you. And while you can't feel it like a real bite, the emotional pain remains something unbearable. Maybe that is your style, maybe not. It all depends on what you want, where it is. It could be a desert, it could be a lone planet. It could be anywhere, make it up and work with it. One person trapped on an alien world trying to survive, what do they find? How do they find it? How do they leave if they do? Maybe more come and they learn how to survive like that person or being and then they start a community there where they never had to escape because it was always their new home. Who knows? Next, problems and resolutions. So there are various hills and mountains to climb to get to the end of any story. How many times does the antagonist attack or attempt to attack the protagonist? How many near or easy escapes will the protagonist make and or gain? Though the antagonist remains enemy number one, those around who don't see or understand what's going on can also aid the antagonist to drive the good person or protagonist crazy or to commit unfavorable acts to escape or evade being trapped in debate or worse as the next issue draws near. So imagine you're a character. Something's gone wrong. Something's gone bad. They're running through an office while the one that's after them probably works there and keeps doing things and probably has done something to them where if they don't get to the bathroom and get water on this device to short it out, boom. They've got 10 minutes in the office during break when everyone gets up at the same time to get to the elevator. And they're trying to get there first, get everyone out and get down to where they can be. And someone might say, hey, come on, guy. Come on, an elevator to the bathroom. I have legitimately worked in a building where that was the only place. I literally had to go from the basement to the fifth floor to get to a bathroom because the fifth floor was the only floor with a bathroom in a eight floor building. So use your real life to boost your fantasy world. It's the same, right? Where does fantasy and reality mix and where doesn't it? Lots of little things to think about. So next, what can resolve this conflict? How, where, and when does this conclude for the protagonist? You know, the good guy. Though it ends for the hero or heroine, it doesn't mean it's over for the villain. Oh no, the villain could be oh, stopped, forgotten about, or just say, ah, you got away, I'll leave you alone. Who knows? Who knows the mindset of this villain other than you? You know the mindset of this villain. That's the only other person that knows the mindset of the villain, is your villain. You run your villain the way you want to. So next, while the favorable person evades more strife and antics, maybe someone earlier that didn't believe the protagonist becomes the target, and just as it begins, 
and this person realizes the mistake they made, the book ends. Sometimes picture your book like it's going to be a movie. You know? What's going on? Why is it going on? What's in the middle? How does it end? You know? There are lots of little tiny tips that I could give. For example, if you watch a movie, try to narrate it. Try to narrate everything that you see in your head or if you're alone verbally. See how it might be written. Look up different writing techniques from various authors. You know, it doesn't have to be a famous author for it to be a credible writing technique. It could be someone that's just started, went through all this research, want to package it in one little area for you to download and read or something and or listen to. Take that chance because the best writers look for inspiration on writing techniques, styles, and whatnot from every place, not just a, an assumed credible place. They go everywhere, in and out, and sometimes make it up because in order to write, it had to start somewhere, didn't it? Someone had to invent how to write, the style, how to please people, how to keep them engaged, and so forth and so forth. So remember, your fiction will be just as made up as all the writing styles out there that people use and are going to use. And you never know, you just might be that person to make up the next style or just write what you want to write and make the next great book. It's very possible. We need new writers. We need new you. So please, Use this and anything else you can to become that writer that you want to be, that we all need for you to be, so we can read your greatness. Thank you for your time. And don't give up. Goodbye.